Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Think you know the world before you were born? Despite references, text, and recounts, chances are not everything you were told or think you know about the history of the world is accurate. In this installment, we're shining the light on some of the more popular historical myths to help keep our archivists well informed. Number 10, Pythagorean's Theorem. Oh no, a math fact. Try to stay with us, archivist. We won't be talking about how the square of the hypotenuse of a right triangle is equal to the sum of the squares of the remaining sides for long, because we'd rather discuss the inaccuracies in the history of the theory. While we're quick to give Greek mathematician and philosopher Pythagoras credit for discovering the theorem, history may have us thinking differently. Over the course of a thousand years before Pythagoras allegedly discovered the mathematical theorem, similar theories have been implemented in Babylon, ancient India, and ancient China. Considering Pythagoras was also against keeping records of his work, references to his discovery of the theory all come from third parties. Number 9. The Battle of Thermopylae Yes, there was a bloody battle that included 300 Spartans and Persian forces, but our romanticized version of the Battle of Thermopylae is missing quite a few details. Despite what Frank Miller's graphic novel 300 may have taught you and what sloppy recounts led you to believe, the number of soldiers fighting against the Persians was far greater than 300. Chances are you'll hear more about the 299 Spartans that perished than of the over 4,000 allies that stood behind the Grecian warriors. Backing the Spartans was believed to be a mass of helots, thespians, and Thebans. Some historians think the Grecian force may have been as high as 8,000 strong, making their defeat even more devastating. Number 8. Cleopatra was Egyptian There are quite a few myths surrounding Cleopatra, such as how she may not have been as beautiful as depicted and killed herself over the death of Mark Antony. But what may be even more shocking is that the late Egyptian pharaoh actually wasn't even Egyptian. In fact, her name isn't even an Egyptian name. Should you trace her lineage, you'll find that despite being Egyptian-born, she's linked to the Ptolemaic dynasty, a family associated with Macedonian Greece. The name Cleopatra is a derivative of a Grecian name meaning glory of the father. Though Ptolemies of Egypt stuck to speaking their native tongue of Greek, Cleopatra sought to be assimilated into the Egyptian culture and therefore spoke Egyptian and claimed herself as the reincarnated form of the Egyptian goddess of health, marriage, and wisdom, Isis. Number 7. The Burning of the Witches Despite what Monty Python and the Holy Grail and general historical miscommunications may leave you believing, burning witches was not a common practice all throughout history. There are instances scattered throughout history, such as in Denmark after the 1536 Reformation and in Scotland during the North Berwick Witch Trials, but one of the most popular myths associated with burning witches is that it was the choice method of dispatching during the Salem Witch Trials in Salem, Massachusetts. In actuality, that couldn't be farther from the truth. Were residents of Salem killed over suspicion of witchcraft? Absolutely, but burning was never implemented. 19 people executed during the trials were hung, while the 20th, Giles Corey, was crushed to death by stones. Number 6. The Death of Grigory Rasputin The popular circumstances behind his murder claim that Rasputin survived being poisoned, shot four times, beaten, and castrated, only to finally die after drowning in the Malaya Nevka River. The primary assassin behind the mad monk's murder, Prince Felix Yusupov, recounts that when Rasputin didn't die from cyanide poisoning, the prince shot him in the stomach. Still alive, Rasputin rushed outside only to be shot in the back and head. Despite the gunshot wounds, the healer lived, prompting a beating from the prince before being dumped into the river where he finally drowned. Rasputin's autopsy tells a different story, however, showing no signs of cyanide or water in his system. Instead, it's believed he was likely shot twice in the back, collapsed to the ground, then fatally shot in the head. Why would he have lied? possibly to make Grigori look far more mystical and terrifying than he actually was. Number 5. Slaves Built the Egyptian Pyramids We've all pretty much heard and learned throughout the years that Egyptians forced Israelite slaves to erect their impressive triangular structures, but a discovery at the Great Pyramids of Giza put the kibosh on a theory that Egyptologists had long been disputing. Burial tombs believed to be more than 4,000 years old were found housing dozens of remains, preserved by dry sand and buried with the essentials for the afterlife, beer and bread. Workers traveled from different regions of Egypt to partake in the building of the pyramids, and though they were typically from poor families, they were respected workers that were given honorable burials if they died during construction. Number 4. The 4th of July 
Every 4th of July, Americans go into a frenzy, setting off fireworks and barbecuing a record number of hot dogs to celebrate their independence from the British. If you know anything about United States history, celebrating on the 4th may confuse you because, unlike what many Americans likely believe, the Declaration of Independence was really signed on July 2nd, 1776. In a letter to his wife, John Adams even predicted that Americans would hold grand festivities on July 2nd, the day that he and his cohorts brandished the document with their John Hancocks. Had the Continental Congress worked quicker, Adams's vision of the future would be real, but it took them two days to review, edit, and approve the signed draft of the Declaration. Number three, the invention of the light bulb. Top 10 trivia time, who invented the light bulb? If you said Thomas Edison, we're sorry, you won't be moving on to the bonus round. Though you're partially correct, Edison as the sole inventor of the bulb is a complete myth. It just so happens that Edison was the first to finalize and successfully patent the device. While working on a means of creating electricity, Italian inventor Alessandro Volta is said to have inadvertently created the first instance of incandescent lighting as early as 1800, 79 years before Edison. Following Volta, English inventor Humphrey Davy created the first electric lamp in 1802. 38 years later, British inventor Warren Delarue created a version deemed too expensive. Other inventors involved in the creation of the bulb include Henry Woodward and Matthew Evans, who actually had a patent filed for an unsuccessful electric lamp in 1874. Number two, Napoleon was short. Per records at his time of death, Napoleon Bonaparte was listed as being five foot two inches or 157 centimeters tall, leading to the age old myth that he was a man of tiny stature. Over the course of time, the former Frenchman has been hilariously depicted as a runt but the truth is, he may not have been of such a below average height. At the time of his autopsy, carried out by Frenchman Francesco Antomarchi, Napoleon was listed at the shorter height. The issue being that Antomarchi would have likely listed the measurements in French units, which were slightly shorter than British measurements at the time. When the conversion is factored in, assuming the report was listed in French units, Bonaparte would have really been around 5 foot 6 inches or 168 centimeters, which, at the time, was of normal height. Number 1. Columbus Discovered America Ah, the discovery of America. To many, it's a reason to celebrate the Italian explorer who sailed across the high seas from Spain in search of the New World. To those that know their history, however, it goes back a lot further than Columbus's 15th century voyage. As early as 1000 AD, Viking explorers led by Leif Erikson settled in the area of Newfoundland in Canada. Erikson's presence may not have had a prolonged impact on the native population of North America, but he and his people undoubtedly beat Columbus to the punch. In fact, it's believed that the Italian explorer didn't even set foot in North America, rather reaching Central and South American coasts instead.